In this video I present 10 top tips for Capture 112 Volume 2. These tips were created for Capture 112 but I'm sure some of them will work in earlier versions. If you do find these tips useful then please like and subscribe. OK, let's have a look at a nice little tip for setting ratings. First, let's have a look how we would normally set ratings. We would normally just go to an image and select its dot. Picking the dot for the star rating we'd like to give it. So in this image we've clicked the fifth dot to give it five stars. And there are a couple of other ways to set the rating apart from just clicking the dots. One way we can do it is to right click on the image and go to rating and select the rating we require such as zero. Or another way is to use the keyboard. While the image is selected just to press one, two, three, four or five to set the rating from one to five or press zero to clear it. And if you want to set the rating of multiple images all you do is select your multiple images. In this case I'll just select the first and then shift select the last one. The dots don't actually work here on multiple images, just one. I have no idea why, but that's the way it is. But we can right click and choose rating. Let's just set them all to five. So right click and then choose rating and I'll just set them to zero for now. Or we can use the keyboard shortcuts with multiple files selected. It works fine. So with the keyboard if I hit one, two, three, four or five or zero to clear. There we go, we can use the keyboard to set the rating for multiple images. And also there's a really nice easy way to set a rating to zero. Okay, let's just pick an image, say this one and set its rating to five with the mouse. With the mouse we can click one, two, three, four or five. Now of course we could set it to zero using the right click method or by using the keyboard shortcut but there is another way and this is the tip. All you have to do is click on the stars and swipe to the left and bingo they're set to zero. Holding the mouse button down to set the rating works and then swipe to the left to zero it. Unfortunately this doesn't work with multiple files. If I select a couple of files like so and try it, it just doesn't work. It just sets the one. So that's it, just click on the rating and swipe to the left. Sometimes you may have a picture that is quite tricky to white balance and you try your best to use your white balance tool. So let's select our white balance picker, there we go. But there's nowhere with a true white or grey to pick. That's slightly blue, that's blue, that's brown, and the greens. There's just nowhere in the image with a true grey or white to click on. We could go in and try to adjust the Kelvin, make it a little warmer, or adjust the tint, make it a little bit more magenta maybe. That's pretty good, but sometimes it can be tricky, even when using the white balance sliders. Sometimes using the picker or the sliders on the white balance tool just doesn't seem to get the job done. So instead, what I sometimes use is the color balance tool. I'll just reset this white balance. Then as we can see, looking at this image, it seems to have a sort of greenish yellow tint to the whole image. So if I go over to my color balance tool and make sure master is selected, the color balance will now affect the whole image. And now I can look at this and say, well, there's green or greeny yellow, and the opposite of greeny yellow is in this direction. So if I just grab the circle and move it in this direction to about, I think there is fine. And there we go. We can see that the tree is the light brown that it should be and the clouds are nice and white with a very slight blue from the sky so that white balance is pretty much correct and we can make adjustments to the hue here if you don't think the hue is quite right and the intensity here I think 
that's about right. So, there we go. Using the master setting on the color balance tool, I've managed to correct my white balance. Sometimes, if you find you've got a tricky white balance, it's worth giving this method a go. It may just work. In this tip, I'm going to show you some alternate slider controls. Here we have a nice image. Let's say we want to decrease the exposure, for instance. Normally, we just adjust the exposure control with our mouse, like so. But sometimes you'd like a much finer resolution when you're trying to change the exposure or any other control. All you have to do is hold down the Alt key whilst moving it and you will get slower, finer increments on the slider. The Alt key gives you finer control of any slider. So if we go to the brightness slider for instance and hold Alt whilst changing it, we have much finer control. And here's a nice little trick with the mouse. It's a nice little thing. If you go to any slider and then just hover your mouse over it, then if you use your mouse wheel, you can move the slider, like so. Using the mouse wheel, you can increase or decrease the slider. And it works with all sliders, like so. And there we go. And that's how you can control a slider with your mouse wheel. And my final little control tip for the sliders in this video is select a slider, let's say the saturation. And then once you have your slider selected, you can use your left or right keys on the keyboard or your up and down keys. The cursor keys. So, using the cursor keys, you can very gradually, one increment at a time, alter the sliders. So, there you go, that's the using the sliders tip. Okay, here's a nice little tip. If you find you're constantly switching between tools, maybe going to the color tab and then back to the exposure tab, or maybe going to the lens tab and then back again and just switching between one tab to another frequently on one image then the answer is to create yourself a custom tool tab all you do is right click on the tools bar like so then go to add tool tab and custom tool tab then just name your tab I'll call this one my color tab and then click add tab no, actually, I'll, before we add the tab, I'll select a custom icon. I think I'll make it a little star. Now click Add Tab. And now when we go to the little star, it says My Color Tab. We have a little icon for a tab of our own. Now, if we select this tab, at the moment it's empty. All we have to do is right click on the tab and click Add Tool. Now, as this is going to be my specialist color tab, I think first I'll select um, levels, like so. Then I'll right click again and add another tool. This time I think I'll choose color editor. And I think I'll also add a color balance. There we go. So there we go, I've got a nice custom tab with all the basic tools I need for color editing and I don't need to switch between tabs to select these frequently. And that's how you add a custom tab to Capture One Pro. Here's a nice little tip for when you're drawing masks with the adjustment brush. Let's Select our adjustment brush and press M so that we can see our mask when drawing. Then start drawing. There's our mask. And as you can see, it's created a new mask layer for us as soon as we started to draw. Now let's just increase our exposure a little bit so that we can see. Then we'll just press M again so that we can hide our mask indicator. And now here we go. We can draw as normal. 
But if we press shift when we click in a new position, we get a line. Let's just increase the exposure on the mask a little more so that we can see a bit better. Holding shift, we get a line from the last position, like so. And we can keep drawing lines for as long as we like. We can increase the size to draw thicker lines. With the square bracket keys, I'll shrink the brush to make a thinner line. And if we want a completely separate line, we just click in one place and then shift click in another place. Click in a new place, hold shift. So this way we can draw straight lines using the adjustment brush. I think that's pretty good. Another little trick you can perform is to create perfectly vertical or horizontal lines. All you do is click and then hold down shift while drawing and there you have it, a perfectly horizontal line. It doesn't waver at all. And if I do the same thing but draw downwards, I can create a perfectly vertical line. Obviously it works going up too. I think that's a really handy feature. Really nice. And while we're here, here's another little tip. If you just hold down the control key while you draw, you can move your mask around like so. Which you may not use often, but you may find at some point that your mask is off by a little bit. So there we go, some nice little tips for drawing lines with Capture One. Right, now I'm going to show you Capture One's really nice copy and apply adjustment system. It's a little different from most systems, but I think it works very well. Normally, when you're copying and applying adjustments from one image to another, in other programs, you'll select an image and then copy it using Control c or an icon. And then you'll select another image or images and press Control v or use an icon to apply those adjustments. Now, Capture One has a different system which is really flexible and quite easy to use. It just takes a little getting used to. So, all you do, if you want to copy adjustments from one image to another, let's just start by selecting no images by selecting in between the thumbnails on a blank area. Then you select all of the images that are going to be involved in the copy operation. In this case, I've just selected two by using control and left click to select them individually. And if I want to, I can also use control and click to deselect one of the images, but let's select it. Now I have two images selected at the moment. The image with the thick white border here and here is called the primary variant. And that is your source image. And you can change the source by clicking on any of the images you have selected. Now the second image is my source. But for now I'll select the first one as my primary or source. Then all you do is use this icon to copy your adjustments from the source image. And then this icon to copy the adjustments to the rest of the images you have selected. In the source or primary variant let's increase the exposure. Then we'll copy from this primary variant using the copy icon here and then just use the paste icon to paste the adjustments and there we have it we have the adjustments copied from our source to our destination okay let's just reset everything so that we can try something else select nothing and the great thing is this can work really well and really easily with multiple images let's select multiple images I'll select one image just by clicking and I want to select five images so I'll hold shift and click on the fifth one. Using shift allows me to select a range of images and now if I want to I could exclude an image just by holding control and clicking on it and I can re-include an image just by holding control and clicking it again. So using this method I have complete control over the range of images and which images are included in the copy operation. Now, remember the primary variant is the source which is denoted by the thick white border. So now we have these selected, we can select any image as the source. We just 
click on an image from the currently selected images and that becomes the primary variant or the source. If I just increase the exposure on the source so we can see something happening, you can see our source or primary variant now it has a very high exposure. Okay, so we're ready to copy to the other images. So all we do is click on the copy icon and then just click on the paste icon and voila, all of the images have the exposure copied to them. So to recap, the overall operation is to select all of the images that are going to be involved in the copy, then select your source or primary variant, then do a copy using the copy icon here, and then do a paste using the copy adjustments to icon here. And that is how you use Capture One system for copying adjustments from one to one or multiple images. I think it's a really nice system and really quick when you get the hang of it. Here's a nice quick tip for you. One just to enhance your editing experience a little. Most of the time when editing you'll probably have your library panel over here on the right. But you can move it to the bottom or back to the right if you like. It's a toggle. Press Ctrl, Shift and B and it moves from the side to the bottom. And you can scroll through your images and pick them as usual. Then Ctrl, Shift, B again to put it back to the right where you can scroll up and down through your images. You may think, well, why is this useful? Well, let's say you're using a very wide image, like, for instance, where is it? Um, this one. Okay, we can see it pretty well, but it would be nice to have some more real estate on the screen. It would be nice to have this image bigger on the screen, but still retain our library panel. If we now press Control, Shift and B, now our wide image has maximum width. It's the whole width of the screen, obviously minus our adjustment panel, but now the wide image is in a wide window, which is better for editing. We're making maximum use of the space that we have, and we can do our adjustments, etc. Now, if we pick a tall image, let's say, for instance, this one, now it would be better for our image to occupy more height. So, Control shift and b and now we can see our image at maximum height, so we get to see more detail and it makes it much easier for editing. And there we go, a quick but quite handy tip. In this tip, I'm going to show you how to do something really cool that you can do with Capture One's process recipes. First, go to the Output tab. Here are the recipes. Process recipes are what they say they are. They allow you to create different recipes for output. So you can output lots of different images in lots of different formats to lots of destinations with a single operation. It's a really powerful system. In this case, I'm going to show you how to use a process recipe to output multiple images to an external program. Let's just turn this process recipe off and create a new one with the plus sign. And then we'll call it something like edit output and there we go that's our new process recipe and we can have as many as we like and select as many as we want at once but for this tutorial I'll just show you this one handy thing it's really cool I'll just select JPEG could be anything I'll leave the rest of this alone it really doesn't matter for this tutorial these things don't really matter. What does matter for this is open with. If I click the drop down, now I've got Affinity Photo installed, so that's what I'll select. And for the output location, I'll just leave it as the default session output. And then all I have to do is select the images that I want to be processed. So I'll just select these three and then hit process. Then just wait for it to sit and do its processing and then once it's finished it will output its files to in this case affinity photo now let's say i just wanted to use affinity photo to add something to the images which only affinity photo could do for this test i'll just add a little bit of clarity let's just filter sharpen and clarity 
I'll just set it to a point where I can actually see that it's added some. There we go. And then I'll select another image and do exactly the same again. Sharpen and clarity. Then select the final image, the third one we output and do exactly the same again. There we go. Now we've added clarity to all of the images from Capture One. Of course, you could be outputting for many reasons. You could be cleaning up the images, removing artifacts as uh, the final part of your development process, anything really. Things that you just can't really achieve with Capture One. Now I'll just quit from Affinity Photo, click yes to save the documents. And now here we go. If we go to the output location of our session, like so, we can see our images which have had the clarity applied in Affinity Photo. This is a really nice way of using the process recipes to do batch processing. This can be a really handy part of your development cycle. In this tip I'll show you how to compensate for the light fall off or inherent lens vignetting in raw images automatically. Okay, so first let's go to the lens tab for our lens related features. Then look at the lens correction section. We can see this light fall off slider. Now this light fall off slider is the compensation for the inherent vignetting caused by lenses. For some reason, I don't know why, but Capture One always sets this to zero by default. But we're going to create a user preset that will allow us to automatically apply this correction on import. If we bring the light fall off up to 100, like so, then take a look. Off, on, off, on. You can see that before the image had a slight vignetting, but with the adjustment, the light across the image is nice and flat, even. Let's check out another image. Just type 100 into the light fall off and have a quick look. We'll go and do the before and after, before, after and before and after. And you can see the vignetting at the edges of the image and this is the light fall off. We've compensated for it here. So now we have a nice even image. We have nice flat light over the complete image. It doesn't have the fall off. Now at the moment, this won't get applied automatically on import. So what we've got to do is create our own user preset. All we do is click here and select save user preset. And we have a fall off of 100, so it will save it at its current state. In the presets section, just select light fall off. And then when the preset is used on import, it will only apply light fall off. And then just select save. Then just give it a name, let's call it Light Fall Off Preset. Then hit save to save it in the default location. And now we'll just import these images again. So just delete the images and go to Import and select Import All. I've already got the directory set. But first we need to select our user preset. So in Styles, Select user presets and then lens correction and light fall off preset. And now it will apply our light fall off preset to these images and all future images that we import, unless we remove it from the import dialog. So in the lens section, let's look at our lens correction and you can see for both images, it's set it to 100. And that is how you compensate for light fall off on import of images. Excellent. In this tip, I'll show you how to use the levels tool to change the color of objects rather than using the color controls on the color tab. So the first thing we do is make sure we have an object masked. I have one here. I've masked this bin. If I press M, we can see it and I have the mask layer selected. I'll just press M to deselect the mask display. Now, if I go to the saturation in my exposure tool and bring the saturation all the way down to zero, 
It turns the bin black and white. So I've got a completely blank canvas for adding colour. Next I go to my Levels tool and let's say I want to make the bin red. I just select the centre point here and move it to the left to increase the red colour. The more I move it to the left, the more red it becomes. And then if I want to make it a much more intense red, I select green and move that to the right. And select blue and move that to the right as well. And now I have a beautiful red bin. In fact, the closer the points of the different channels are together, the less intense the colour. If I just go back to my red channel and bring it to the centre-ish, quite near the centre, and then do the same with the green channel and the same with the blue channel, like so, we end up with a very pastel red, which has a lot less saturation. And of course, we can have different colours. For instance, let's make the bin blue. On the blue channel, bring it to the left. There it is, blue. And for intensity, right with the red and the green. And there we have a beautiful blue bin. And to make it magenta, quite simple. Blue and red make magenta, so bring the red over to where the blue is and we have magenta. It really is that simple. Quick recolouring. And if we want to mix our colour with the original colour, just bring the saturation back up. We've mixed the new colour with the original colour. And that's an alternate way to recolour with Capture One. Thank you.